Well, with a special envoy to Suriname, Senator Alfio Wiggins says there's been a tremendous response to the Business to Business Forum held last week. Under the Boko Pondo Program for Cooperation, as it is known, both territories will collaborate on a variety of areas, including agriculture, tourism, art and culture. Ms. Wiggins tells CBC she is in the process of matching the Barbadian business people with similar businesses in Suriname. We have had firm approaches from farmers in Barbados in terms of farming the lands in Suriname. So I can't give you numbers because there have been several inquiries, but of course, as you know, these things have to be followed through on. So it's not just, yes, I want to go to Suriname. The protocols have to be laid out on both sides. But there has been tremendous interest in the agricultural component of the Broker Ponder Program for Cooperation. The special envoy says outside of agriculture, Suriname has expressed an interest in other local products. They want to, Roberts Manufacturing, for example, to export feed to Suriname. They want cement exported. They need card boxes for their rum industry. They also want to import plastic roofing tiles. They want us to show them and teach them the technology for solar water heaters. They want us to get involved in joint tourism projects. And what I would say to you is that they have a tri-nation agreement with French Guyana, Dutch Guyana, and as we used to say in the past, British Guyana, where they want to in, uh, um, involve Barbados in that arrangement as well. Well, Barbados has gained some valuable insight into Singapore's experience in transforming its agricultural sector. That country, since gaining independence from Malaysia back in the 1960s, has been able to modernize its agriculture and food security sector. The strides made were highlighted to local agricultural officials and students during a forum at the Hilton Hotel. They learned about the progress made with respect to vertical indoor farming, precision agriculture, controlled environment food farming, and agri-food policies by Singapore for Professor Paul Tang, who specializes in food security, agri-technology innovations, bio-entrepreneurship, and sustainable development. The visiting agricultural official says the government of Singapore has evolved the sector from a labor-intensive one to a sector sector that is innovation driven. We still have today some what I would term the legacy farming, smallholder farms. We do have smallholder farms in Singapore, but very few. Yeah? And that was on purpose. All these farms were consolidated into six agrotechnology parks, starting in the 80s to the 90s. And I'll show you shortly a map of where those parks are. Okay? And then the phasing out of animal agriculture. In fact, we have barely any animal agriculture left except fish and egg production. We basically outsourced animal agriculture to neighboring islands, neighboring countries, in fact. Yeah. So it's a, it's a real paradox, you know, that our main source of fresh pork, which is a preferred meat, comes from our neighboring country, Indonesia. Members of the public, especially locals, continue to disregard red flags erected at beaches. Those red flags mean that no swimming is allowed. The matter was brought to the fore by lifeguards from the National Conservation Commission who underwent a sensitization session and tabletop exercise conducted by the Department of Emergency Management and members of the Technical Standing Committee on Coastal Hazards. The lifeguards noted that there were many instances when they risked their lives to save those who ignored their warnings. They added that in the case of a tsunami, especially one for which there would be mere minutes to prepare, the challenge would be getting everyone off the beaches within a short space of time and encouraging them to run to higher ground. Well, the fundraising and scholarship efforts of the Schoolhouse for Special Needs will get a major boost this weekend as the Rotary Club of Barbados stages a concert featuring an international tribute band. The show, which will be held tomorrow at the University of the West Indies Cafil Graduation Tent, will be headlined by the ultimate Elton and the Rocket Band along with several local acts. Rotary Club of Barbados member Ron Davis explains similar concerts are held every 18 months. This year we have an amazing band coming in uh, in the form of Ultima Elton and the Rocket Band who actually have played for Elton, Elton's mom's birthday party. 
So they're well versed in, in everything Elton and uh, they're going to do a phenomenal job. We, we also have several uh, local acts who are playing as well. And the school's principal, Yasmin Valakis, is deeply appreciative of the continuous work which the Rotary Club is doing for her institution. We at the Schoolhouse for Special Needs are very pleased and honored to be associated with the Rotary Club of Barbados. Through their devotion to our school and their ongoing support, we have been able to fi finally find a permanent home for the school here at Britain Court which is located in Reservoir Road, Britain's Hill. Over the years, the Rotary Club have sponsored and organized a number of shows um, to highlight the school and to bring music and entertainment to our island. Well, of course, it is the month of our independence and in tonight's edition of Hashtag 246, Shane Jones looks at one of those iconic pieces of Barbadiana that be gathering patrons will be sure to be taking pictures of. One of the most distinguishable and controversial pieces of Barbadian history and heritage, the infamous statue of Lord Admiral Nelson. Now, this statue was erected way back on March 22nd of 1813, and it is regarded as a remarkable likeness of the Admiral himself. Now, it was sculpted by Sir Richard Westmacott, who was regarded as the first caster of bronze in the kingdom. This statue predates the Nelson Column in Trafalgar Square in London by nearly 30 years. Now, very soon after his victory and subsequent death at Cape Trafalgar in 1805, plans were made to honor Horatio Nelson's memory. Now, Barbadians at the time believed, quite proudly too, that they were the first to put up such a monument. However, they were in fact the third after Montreal and also Birmingham. Now, his popularity came because of the impression he made on Barbadians at the time, resulting in them purchasing the statue and land when he died, naming it Trafalgar Square and paying tribute to the Admiral by erecting the statue. And of course, we know Trafalgar Square is today Hero Square. So whether he's facing the west or he's being turned around to face the east, the fact still remains that Lord Nelson still stands in Bridgetown. Oh, Hashtag 246 was brought to you with the kind compliments of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. Here is that tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. Did you know? In Barbados, the most frequent types of property crime are burglary and theft. This tip is brought to you in association with the Criminal Justice Research and Planning Unit, keeping an eye on crime. <laughs> 